Welcome to a brand new week and this week we are starting uh, a teaching on fruitfulness. Now if you followed carefully you would know that fruitfulness is our theme uh, for the year and so since it's the theme I'm going to use two weeks to talk about fruitfulness. This week I'll start and the next week I'm going to continue talking about fruitfulness. I want to give it some time to be able to explore the concept as much as I can within next two weeks. So uh, let's have this journey of fruitfulness and I trust that God will make your life fruitful and, and you'll bear fruit in different areas of our lives. So we start with the book of Genesis. That is where everything starts and we start with Genesis chapter 1 verse 11 and it reads, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. So God made our planet a place of fruitfulness. He's given the earth the ability to produce life and to sustain it. This is a fruitful planet. But when you read the Bible's account of life on earth, it wasn't always a fruitful place. As a matter of fact, from Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, the earth is described as a place uh, that is void and darkness is on the deep. It's just a watery planet, but it wasn't producing the diversity of life as we know it, uh, definitely not intelligent life as we know it. So, the Spirit of God moved upon the earth and prepared it to be a fruitful place because ultimately, God was going to create his image, you and I. And so, he prepared the earth to be fruitful before man came. So, in our passage today, Genesis chapter 1, verse 11, the passage says, God said, let the earth bring forth, bring forth. Uh, we use that term to mean something is producing. And in the context, it is sprouting vegetation. Let the earth produce vegetation. The statement presupposes that God had already equipped the earth for that purpose. He had prepared it so that it can produce. So, we live on a fruitful planet. Now, for us to live fruitful lives, we need to recognize that God did not place us in a sterile environment. God did not place us in, in a place that cannot support productivity and fruitfulness. God placed us in an environment that is teeming with so much product. When you look all around you, you see vegetation, you see majestic trees that you look up to, you see the humble grass that you walk upon, you see flowers in their different colors and diversity of designs, and you see all of this magnificent display of productivity from the hand of God. It is to remind us that we live in a fruitful environment. And that is so important because with that understanding, then we can know that no matter where God places us on this planet, we are surrounded by fruitfulness. So you cannot live in a part of the world and think that you can't be fruitful in that place or you cannot be productive. Whether you live in the so-called uh, developed world or the so-called underdeveloped world by whatever index is used, we know. In God's economy, wherever he places us is a place of fruitfulness. So that's what I want you to get right from the start. That where you are now, I don't know what place you are, what town, what city, what family, what environment, um, what continent you are from, wherever you are is a fruitful place. Now that is where we start understanding how to be fruitful because if you don't get that right, you would even let your location disqualify you. But your location cannot disqualify you from fruitfulness because God made the earth to be fruitful. And that's where we start our teaching on fruitfulness from. Let us pray. 
Say with me, Heavenly Father, you have made the earth to be fruitful. I boldly declare that I will flourish wherever you plant me in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yes, you will flourish because wherever God plants you is a fruitful place. I'll catch you again tomorrow. I'm Pastor Mensah Otabel. Shalom, peace, and life to you.